All right, everyone. Welcome to Japanese Heraldry: The Evolution of the Moon. Uh, I am Richard Schaefer, the host of Samurai Gaiden on YouTube. Uh, and today we're going to talk about well, Japanese heraldry. Okay. So, first of all, what is heraldry? <clears throat> uh, heraldry is the art or study of armorial bearings ranks and peerages, genealogies, and noble honors. Uh, you hear about nobility in Europe, counts, dukes, that was all part of their heraldry. <clears throat> heraldry is often condensed to just armory, which is badges and crests, but really heraldry is the entire thing. <clears throat> uh, you see in old movies, the town crier, once upon a time that was the herald. Uh, a herald was a highly respected member of the court because his job was to memorize all the badges, crests, names, and titles of everyone who might or might not show up there at any random time. Uh, as I said, common types of heraldic items include the coat of arms, crests, badges, and other related items. <clears throat> uh, this is an example of a coat of arms. I am descended from the Scottish Armstrong family. so. I got a personal like for that one. <clears throat> uh, this is a much simpler one that you might see on a shield. Uh, it's merely a red background with a black line rompant. You might also see a badge like this for Thank you. I remember which one came first. Uh, for the US Coast Guard. Uh, <clears throat> you see the anchors signify they are a water-based organiza uh, yeah, organization. Uh, it's got their date of creation, theoretically at least, 1790. Uh, represents you know who they feel they are at least. <clears throat> Before we get into history of heraldry, let's look at modern types of her uh, heraldry. What is a good modern form of heraldry? Not yet. Uh, <clears throat> that is the unit badge of the Chasseurs Ardenna, or the Hunters of the Ardennes, a Belgian military unit, still in existence today. Uh, their motto, Resist et Mort, Resist and Bite, it's the Sabaton song. <clears throat> you can see in their badge swords because they're a military unit, uh, a boar's head because that's their unit emblem, but it describes their unit in a visual format. So it's a modern form of heraldry in America. Fighting soldiers from the sky, fearless men who jump and die. That's a Green Beret pin. Uh, United States Special Forces, same as the Chaucer's Ardenai. They have their own unit badges. The Green Beret itself could be considered a form of heraldry because just that particular unit uses it. I like the MIDI of it. <laughs> I thought that fit well. It doesn't end there, so you have to. <clears throat> and of course, there's our Pennsylvania state flag. Why it has an ocean faring vessel on it, I've never understood, because we're a landlocked state. But we've got horses, because we have plains, huge farming community, the eagle, the motto, all of that. It's a crest of arms. You can... They used to go up the river to get to Philadelphia, though. Didn't yeah, but that's a triple mast ship. That's an ocean faring vessel. I mean, true, but. <laughs> <clears throat> so, Japanese heraldry. Japanese heraldry is generally referred to by the mon. You could argue there are different types, but that's the main brand, is their mon. Uh, mon would appear on clothing, banners, walls, and doors. Clothing? So, as you can see, uh, our depiction of Oda Nobunaga there has. Uh, is Koshichi no Kiri, showing that he has, at this point in whatever movie this is from, uh, he has taken the capital over and is now the emperor's lapdog, or so the emperor would think. Nobunaga was nobody's lapdog. Uh, 
It will also be on banners, which we'll go over later, and on walls and doors, like the Nora in there. <clears throat> uh, so, what was heraldry for? Just like in the West, all of these banners were mainly so you could identify people in battle. Because if you are an archer looking at there and your commander says, shoot the enemy, which one? So you look at the people whose banners you know are friendly and you try not to shoot them. <clears throat> so the most, for most common form of mon is the kamon, the family crest. Uh, anytime you look at anything with Japanese stuff, you're going to see kamon emblazoned everywhere. <clears throat> On the bottom there, we've got really common ones that you might see a lot. The Shimizu is known as the Kutsuwa, a horse's bit. It you know, looks like a cross now, but it's supposed to symbolize the horse's bit that uh, you, know, you stick in its mouth for its pride. Uh, the Ukita is the Jimonji. I have done hours of research trying to figure out what this is for, and I have not figured it out. Neither have a couple of people that I've sought out with PhDs, so I'm not having high hopes for myself. Uh, it can translate as to children's handwriting crest. Uh, essentially, it's just the kanji for child, and a very old kanji for it as well. Uh, the Takeda is the Yotsu Waribishi, the four quarters, or the four water chestnuts. That's the one in the middle. Uh, the Oda is the Moko, which I'll get to later. The date is the Takina Suzumi, sparrows in a nest of bamboo leaves, which is kind of funny. It sounds like a very peaceful, cute one, and anybody knows Date Masamune, anybody has played Samurai Warriors, he's the guy that constantly yells charge. <clears throat> there are arguably five different main types of maw. Depending on the list you look at, they may split it up into as many as eight. I'm going to go with five, and the fifth one I'm going to kind of condense three of the eight into. Uh, we have four. Uh, a good example of that is the Dakimyoga, the Japanese ginger, that's supposed to look like a ginger plant. We also have, excuse me, we also have the Hanawachigai, the irregular flower. It was made popular by the Izumo Genji clan. And here we have a very popular one, the Tachi Omodaka. Uh, that's the three-leaf arrowhead. We'll see similar ones to this later in the panel. Uh, we also have fauna, animals. The Tsuru no Maru is the round crane. Uh, this is popular with a lot of plants. <clears throat> uh, cranes, different birds like that, very popular uh, with numerous plants all over the country. Here's another one, the, Itsu, the Itsutsu Chidori, the four birds. There are five in that. four birds. They didn't necessarily make sense. When we get to the Otomoko, you'll really enjoy that one. Uh, and the Kotobuki Abi, the shrimp. <laughs> Other popular types of mon included items or tools that you might expect a samurai to use. For instance, coins. That is the Sanada's Rokumon, the six coins. <clears throat> uh, one theory I've heard for it is, just as we have the river Styx in the West, particularly European, uh, it's believed that in some uh, areas, they believe that you needed to pay your way to the afterlife, and it cost six mon, or six coins. Uh, or whatever they call it, coins at the time. They've had several names throughout the period. We also have a paper fan, the Hinomaru. Uh, <clears throat> these were used for all kinds of purposes, such as signaling, pointing, combat, or, you might not believe this, but cooling oneself. <laughs> we also have the Gion Mamori, the protection amulet. <clears throat> Tachibana clan used this, and that's extra interesting because there is a mon called the Tachibana, and it is a flower, which would go in the flora category. But they decided, well, we've gone and named ourselves after a flower. Let's not make our crest after it. Let's just confuse everybody. <clears throat> so 
This is a protection amulet. Ideally, you would wear something like that to, I don't know, protect yourself. <clears throat> Other popular ones are religious ones. This is a Shinto Tori. Tori gauge. See, you cross Shinto shrines all the time. <clears throat> we also have the Mumoji. Uh, this one can also kind of fit under kanji, but this is a Zen Buddhist uh, philosophical ideology. Uh, the ideology of zero, which is the void. <clears throat> and this one would be really awkward to walk into right now, the Manji. In Japan, this has hardly any of the connotations that it has in the West. The Manji, and it goes in both directions, if it's facing left, it is the manji. If it's facing right, like that one would be, it is the gyaku manji, or the reverse manji. In Japan, on a map, this is the symbol that will be used to, do, to denote where a Buddhist temple is. <clears throat> uh, manji is also used as a homonym for 10,000. Uh, many Buddhist sutras begin with the manji. Uh, and two manji facing each other create the Sayagata pattern. It's a very popular pattern in the East, and it has developed a lot of popularity in the West, too. That is essentially two swastikas combined to create that pattern in a never-ending form. I can't see it, but that's how that is supposed to be formed. Two interlocking swastikas. Now, Th Then again, again, as you mentioned, that has completely different combinations. It's more a symbol of hope. Right. Yeah. The Hindu swastika was incorporated into Buddhist and essentially uh, into Buddhist ideology, essentially refers to eternity or everything. So, as I said, a lot of Buddhist sutras begin with the manji, stating everything is this, or everything should do that, or everything is everything. <clears throat> so, we then get into that catch all at the end kanji or other. Uh, this is the Yata Garasu, the legendary three legged crow. It's also sometimes thrown into the fauna, but it's not a real creature, so I tend to throw it into the other category. Everybody's favorite samurai, Ishida Mitsunari, <clears throat> his kanji, and this is actually several kanji combined into one symbol. This is the Daichi Daimon Daikichi, which is one for all and all for one will make the world happy and everybody at peace. Yeah. Not too bad for a guy who started a war. <laughs> <laughs> we also have the Nitonami, the Great Wave. Oftentimes, kanji will have its own separate one, like I said, in the list of eight. Uh, legendary creatures may have their own one, but like I said, they're also commonly thrown into the fauna category. And uh, geographic things like mountains, waves, will often have their own separate category. I've thrown them into the top five. <clears throat> so, as I mentioned earlier, the Date Mon, the you know, Ukita Mon, all of that, that's kind of a misnomer because many clans went through various iterations. <clears throat> uh, I mentioned the Oda clan, the Moko, that they used, but that wasn't the only clan Mon they had. We first look at the Ageha Cho, the butterfly. Oda Nobunaga believed that he could trace his descendancy all the way to the leg well, legendary, all the way to the Tyra clan of the Heian period. So he adopted the Ageha Cho, which was the symbol of the Tyra clan, the butterfly. <coughs> he also at one point used the Airoku Suho, which is a coin, because he wanted economic prosperity for his lands. So he displayed that to show, I'm fighting for the economy. <coughs> In that picture, he was wearing the Golsan Kiri, the 5 3 Polonia crest. That's because the middle has five and the two sides have three points. Uh, he was awarded that by Ashikaga Yoshiaki, the shogun, for whenever he helped him reclaim the capital. He also got, I don't know how to pronounce this right, he also got the Maruni, Maruni Nihikyo Ryo, which is Japanese for two lines in a circle. <laughs> Some of them made sense, not all of them. <clears throat> uh, once again, this was awarded by Ashikaga Yoshiaki. This is the Ashikaga clan's emblem. So Nobunaga was granted permission to use that. Uh, once he booted Ashikaga Yoshiaki out, 
and became closer associated as almost a shogun himself and became more associated with the imperial court, he was granted the 16th, the 16 leaf chrysanthemum as an award by the imperial court. We also have Momoji, zero. Uh, as I said before, he refers to the Sunniata belief of emptiness and the void. It's a philosophy about existence and understanding non-existence. We also have the Moko, which is supposed to be a flower encased in a bird's nest. The idea for it was filial prosperity. Throughout, you know, the, the flower is protected by the bird's nest, like the baby egg, you know, baby bird eggs. So your family is protected and will prosper throughout the ages. Or it could also be a type of melon. Moko itself means melon. <clears throat> so, have you seen Mon before outside of a samurai movie or you know a samurai game or such? <clears throat> More than likely you have. Iwasaki Yatoro founded a shipping firm in 1873. Now, he was a samurai of the Yamano Uchi clan uh, of Tosa, also called the Yamano Uchi. So, as a samurai of the Yamano Uchi clan, this shipping firm kind of answered to them. <clears throat> uh, now, Iwasaki's Kamon was the Sangai Bishi, the three-tiered water chestnut. I mentioned the, the Takeda clans was four little uh, diamond-like rhombus shapes. Now, this is three rhombuses stacked on top of each other. Uh, it's supposed to represent a castle in many cases. We also have the ya Yamauchi clan emblem, which is the Mitsukashiwa, just three oak leaves. Uh, particularly, this would be the uh, Mitsugashiwa Maru because it is in a circle. Anytime you see Maru in these, it often means circle. <clears throat> now, whenever the Meiji period really started hitting off and separate, you know, his firm separated into its own separate company, he decided to take the Iwasaki emblem and the Yamauchi emblem and merge it into one. He decided to name his company after the crest. This is how important Kamon was in many times. And he named it the Mitsubishi Company. You may have seen it at some point in time. <laughs> <clears throat> so, the imperial family has a legally protected in Japan mon. It is the Kikumon, the chrysanthemum flower mon. Uh, it can only be used by the emperor of Japan or with his blessing. Uh, the imperial family will uh, often use one like Oda Nobunaga had with only 16 petals. Uh, many Japanese items have the chrysanthemum mon on it. Uh, if you've seen anything from Japan, I'm sure you've seen it. Temples will often also have it if the emperor has blessed them and given them uh, his, his blessing. Uh, the Toyotomi clan. The Koshichi no Kiri, which is the 5 by 7 Polonia crest. <clears throat> Uh, this eventually became the symbol for the Prime Minister of Japan. Now, that is not to say that Toyotomi Hideyoshi was so awesome that they decided, you know, when installing a Prime Minister position, that, hey, let's take his clan and emblem. Especially since he got booted out after a few years. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it actually goes the other way around. This was the emblem granted to highest ranking people of the court. Toyotomi adopted it once he got it because it's a great mon to have. Uh, it also has variants like you saw the 353. Toyotomi also used this. This is the Omodaka. I mentioned the three leaf arrowhead flower. There's multiple variants of it. <clears throat> this was probably, this is the earliest mon we know of him using. But he also used several other ones, just like Oda did. He used the Hiyashi, the sundial, the three magatama. The three magatama in it are, is called a tomoe. Uh, the magatama has you know, various religious and cultural aspects to it. A uh, single magatama is one of the three treasures of the imperial uh, clan. He also used the Hyota, the gourd. That was his favorite symbol. Uh, he used a gourd to symbolize his position on the battlefield. And he liked it so much that he decided I'm going to adopt that as my family crest. Uh, he also used, as I said, uh, 353 Polonia, 
a 575 Polonia, and after attaining the rank of Kompaku, Imperial Regent, he adopted the sharp ed, you know, the sharp leafed one, because that was cooler. <clears throat> and eventually, he started using the cow, which is the monogram or the signature. And that is a stylized way of him writing his own name. Uh, this became popular among certain samurai uh, as a nice way to show like who they were and I'm important enough that people would recognize my signature. This is a document signed by the five regents that Toyotomi put in place just before he died. Uh, if you know anything about the Battle of Sekigahara, they are the five regents who were supposed to keep everything united until Toyotomi's son came of age, and they then went to war with each other. <clears throat> uh, that is Tokugawa Yasu, Maeda Toshie, Wasugi Kajikatsu, <coughs> Ukida Hide, and Mori Teromoto. I can't tell you which one's which because, as you can see, penmanship is not universal. goes away first, in case I want to touch it. <clears throat> so, Issei Shinkuru founded what eventually became the Go Hojo clan in 1495, that is the later Hojo clan. His son, Ujitsuna, in 1523, or around about that time, changed the name of the clan. Now, Issei Shinkuru had captured the area that the Hojo clan once ruled, Kamakura, all that. Uh, whenever they were regents of the Ashikaga Shogunate in Kampokoro. So he decided, since we own that, let's change our name to Hojo, claim that we're descended from them, uh, <clears throat> even though Issei Shinkuru, the Issei clan, is descended from the Taira. The Hojo is descended from loyalists of the Minamoto, which would make them enemies. But he decided, nobody needs to know that. So this is a different version of the Agahe Cho the Tyra butterfly. These are two butterflies facing each other. So, whenever he, uh, whenever Ujitsuna adopted the Hojo name, he adopted their crest. Uh, you might have also seen this crest in similar fashion in the modern day. <laughs> the Ritsuroku, the three fish scales or the three dragon scales, because in Eastern lore, a dragon is not a reptile, it is a fish. Uh, an old Chinese legend states that a, uh, a dragon is born whenever a fish is able to climb up the waterfall of a mountain. When he reaches the peak, he will become strong enough to be a dragon. <clears throat> so, this is how the Hojo clan would have used that kalmon. Uh, on the left side, we have the I have the wrong order my notes. Uh, on the left side, we have the Hata Jirushi, which is a large streamer, basically. It's just tied on by the top, and it blows in the breeze. They eventually tried to stiffen them, and then somebody got the great idea, why don't we just band it on the top and one side, and then it won't flow away as much. And that's where we get the Nobori. Uh, these were common banners used in fortifications, in a camp. It would signalize anything owned by whoever had that banner. <clears throat> we also have the uh, Umajirushi, which is the horse banner. It's used to denote where the general or daimyo was on the battlefield. The Hojo particularly used an Umajirushi, which was just a different version of their mom. Uh, as I mentioned, Toyotomi Hideyoshi used a giant bronze or gold gourd, and it was just a gourd on a pole. <clears throat> uh, if you could get into the enemy camp, in mid-battle, and kill the guy holding that? That was some brownie points with your master. Or if you died in the process, that was some brownie points for your kid with your master. Uh, <clears throat> smaller one there is the Sashimono. This would be worn on a samurai's back. She's in her armor here. It would be on her back here, and go up a couple of feet above her head. And that was so that whenever I'm shooting at people around her, I can identify who she is, that she's on my side, and try my best not to shoot her. That she's hot. The one on the left is the Umamawari Shu. That would be a sashimono worn by a cavalry soldier. And the one on the right is the Sukaiban. That is what messengers on the battlefield would wear. So if you saw the big red banner coming at you, you knew somebody was sending me a message. Because they didn't have these back then.
talked about the Ukita before. Uh, Ukita Nawe was the father, Ukita Hide was the son. But this is, is a sample of their banners. As you can see, his Umajirushi is essentially two umbrellas. Uh, Sashimono is just a double up of his emblem. That's what the soldiers closest to him would wear. Uh, in reality, a daimyo would probably not wear a sashimono because he knows who he is, and that's the important thing. Also, uh, he doesn't want to get picked off by enemy archers, so he really doesn't want people to recognize it's him. That's why the guy standing beside him holds the umajorushi. Shoot him instead. <clears throat> so, do we have modern day Kalmon in the West? Somewhat. Uh, we here in the West don't really have family emblems nearly as much as uh, even to this day. Uh, you can go into your local Buddhist temple in Japan and the priest there can search for what your family's emblem would be or should be or is. And those are used in business dealings. People put them on their houses, people put them on their clothes whenever they're doing you know, more traditional clothing. <clears throat> but in the West, it's mostly used by businesses business logos. Starbucks in 1971 used that logo. And they eventually updated it, just as the Oda and Toyotomi updated their Kalmon. In 92, that was the year you were born, they adopted that. And in 2011, they adopted what they currently have, which is that one. These could all be construed as a business form in the West of a Kalmon. <clears throat> Four, very old company, went through similar iterations. They started off with Ford Motor Company of Detroit, Michigan. They then adopted, my favorite one, the Ford. <laughs> 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 Who do you work for? I work for Ford. <laughs> 1912, they made the Ford Motto, because it's in a circle. 1927, they adopted something a little more familiar to us. At this point, in 2003, they adopted basically what they have now. Uh, graphic design and computers have come to the point where you can make a real easy gradient and make it look shiny and metallic, like a vehicle. <clears throat> so even in modern Japanese businesses, I'm way ahead of schedule. Even in modern Japanese businesses, uh, good next one. You have Mon. Yamaha makes motorcycles, but they also make musical instruments. Their Mon is three tuning forks assembled in a triangular pattern. Kikoman is actually the found, their emblem there, top right side of Kikoman, is the founder's Kamon. That was his family's Mon, his family's emblem. And he used that whenever he found his company. Uh, <clears throat> Those banners there, uh, I believe that's actually the yeah, variant form of Dante's uh, Takane Suzumi, the birds in a uh, bamboo nest. <clears throat> that is called a Nore. Uh You'll see those on Japanese businesses. Uh, they're also used inside buildings to denote where you know you essentially want a temporary wall or you just want to separate things inside the building. <clears throat> Uh, essentially just a curtain with your comb on it. Uh, actually, take me back to the... Um, I don't want to go back. Hey, Joe. Keep going all the way back to this. these very symbols. Flora, eh, since I'm so far ahead of schedule, I'll go back and talk about something I skipped over a little bit. Uh, Flora is probably the largest one. Not even probably. Flora is the largest one. Japanese people love plants. This is just, you know, a, a less than a smidgen of them. There's actually a record of 1,800 different crests recorded in Japan. And that's not including that they believe there are thousands that have, you know, 
fallen out of use, clans that have, you know, disappeared, people who changed their mom. Hmm? Ceased to be. Ceased to be, yes. Clans that have ceased to be. <clears throat> of those 1,800, uh, did I say 1,800? 5,800. I can't even talk today. 5,800. So 5,000. It is. I knew something didn't sound right when I came out of my mouth, which is the usual thing. So 5,800 and some odd crests. And like I said, that's not including, they believe that there's thousands of, you know, weren't recorded because they went missing before they made this record. Of those, about half of them are flora. All different plants, not necessarily all different plants, there's a lot of the same ones. As I mentioned, there's three people in, just in this uh, PowerPoint presentation that have used the Omodaka. Uh, kanji, people who use kanji emblems are sometimes looked down upon as being lacking in creativity. It would be kind of like, you know, making your you know, company logo and it's just the name of the company. Ford. <laughs> yeah, like Ford. <laughs> uh, everybody remembers what the Kutsuwa looked like. It was the Shimizu emblem. It looked like a uh, cross. That was actually adopted as a way to hide your Christianity when Christianity was banned in Japan. People started using the Kutsuwa because it looked like a cross, because it was. Like I said, it was supposed to be a horse's bit, but it eventually, you know, like I said, closet Christians would use it to represent that they were Christian. Uh, similar thing happened in the uh, West when Christians weren't really welcome in certain areas. Uh, one of my favorites is they used an anchor. They put a, two anchors in an X fashion, kind of like that Coast Guard emblem had. And that was to show in this coastal area that they were Christian because it formed a cross pattern. <clears throat> Uh, they did other ones with that too, like X symbols. Uh, one of my favorite common is Niwa Nagahide's. He was one of Oda Nobunaga's uh, closest retainers. His was literally just two lines. It made an X, and that would be on his banners, it would be on his clothes, and I just think that is so simplistic and perfect. You've got all these ones, a three-legged crow, kanji, you know, daichi ma, dai, blah, blah, blah. And it's just, just an X. Ah, <clears throat> uh, can I borrow that one second? The Hinomaru, the paper folding fan. This is just one of many types of fans they had. They also had, uh, like in the tools, one, you would see Gunbai, which were those butterfly-shaped ones, if you've ever seen them. Saihai, which was basically a stick with a tassel on it. These were all things that, you know, commanders would use essentially to point with. Uh, I want to get me back to the end. <clears throat> uh, hmm? Back to the, uh, to the end. All the way to the end? All the way back to y'all. <clears throat> uh, fauna, as I said, fauna were also popular. Birds. Everybody loved birds birds. Uh, there were a few that, you know, used different types of animals, but birds were probably the most popular. Well, um, yeah, all those ground-based animals were dirty, though. They, they didn't eat those. Exactly. Uh, fish, like we saw the shrimp one. Fish were also popular. Shrimp, lobster, things like that. I'm still bad. It's good. Uh, last couple. Alright, <clears throat> another example of a logo, Samurai Gaiden, like I said, you can find on YouTube, uh, you can find all my stuff on Facebook, Twitter, dickjutsu.com, uh, it sounds dirty, it's not, my name is Richard, I'm named after my grandfather Dick, Jutsu is Japanese for technique or style, so it's Richard's style, Richard's technique. Uh, you can get my book if you're interested in it, it's on sale. I would suggest you be 18 because there are sexy scenes in it. Uh, actually, if you're interested in winning it, if you go to my Facebook, one of the last things I've got is a link to it. Amazon is giving away a copy. All you have to do is watch our Samurai Gaiden video on Valentine's Day in Japan. 
Uh, of course, you can find Samurai Gun Inn at samuraigunin.com. <coughs> now that the shilling is out of the way, our logo. It's a stylistic representation of me with about 50 pounds less weight. <laughs> uh, standing in front, of a, in front of a bamboo grove with a sword. Uh, we've got the words in there, our version of kanji. So it gives you a feeling, a representation of what it's supposed to be. You could consider that a form of kamo. Uh, now my favorite part. That was quite an excellent panel. Entertaining and informative, don't you agree? Yes, it was excellent. Here, here. I took notes. Me, too. But, there's so much I still don't know. Yeah, there's something I really didn't understand. Maybe we can ask questions and the fat guy who talked a lot will answer them. <laughs> hey, that's some fancy there. But how do we express our interest in asking a question? Maybe if we raise our hand here, we'll call on us to ask our question? Like this? No, no, much higher. Like this. I wish to learn. I do demand knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> Where the hell did Chinese Nicolas Cage come from? <laughs> 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 he enjoys that way too much. I do. <laughs> and those were all Dynasty Warriors characters, too. They were. It were. <laughs> I'm a writer. It was. Uh, I started that with my panel on a. Romance of the Three Kingdoms last year, and I just like that so much that I used it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so if you're going to come to any other panels of his, you're probably going to see that again. <laughs> I'm going to use it all weekend. <laughs> he likes it. I made an updated one, too, uh, and didn't get enough chance this week to actually render the full video. Uh, but it was basically just more shilling, talking about how you can rate all of the panels on Guidebook now, and... Uh, it was trying to get you to give me a five star rating. Because he's shameless. I am. Did Very I mention shameless. I wrote a book? It's on sale right now. Shameless. Garth Brooks wrote a song about me. Uh, all right, there's no country fans in the room. <laughs> <laughs> there at least one person would be shameless. I know that's all. Nope, you're alone. All right. All alone. <clears throat> all right, so any questions about common, mon, even Western heraldry? Not asked first on that one. Yeah, because I can't see anybody. <laughs> she looked out in the crowd of darkness and was like, there could be eight people that go in. <coughs> Top one should do it. Oh, Lord. I didn't break anything. I still can't see anything. <laughs> so. so you talked about the, uh, the cross influencing the design of some of the uh, are there any other instances of Western influence or the reverse uh, influence of Japanese heraldry on Western heraldry? Uh, a real good example. Their logos have English on them. Because of, in the modern times, doing so much international business. So, Nintendo is just the word Nintendo in English. Uh, uh, various examples of that you see real well in the modern era. Not nearly as much back in the Muromachi, Sengoku period, certainly not in the Heian period, because I hadn't met anybody from Europe yet. <clears throat> uh, you can kind of see some instances, uh, but they're very limited and mostly in Kyushu, and they would oftentimes be closet Christians, uh, because they've ado they would have adopted you know, more European mannerisms and new cultural styles. Because the two ports you could trade at were down there. Right. Which eventually became one. Dejima and uh, Nakajima. Uh, that, that's where you find most of them. Not to say that that was the only place where there were uh, closet Christians. Uh, Takayama Ukon was originally a daimyo in the Central Plains area. And it's said that he 
between that area and the other area that he was made daimyo over, they converted either through charisma or forcefully, like the Japanese Inquisition, over 50,000 people that he converted them to Christianity. Uh, he wasn't popular with the British. With the British. He wasn't popular with the Buddhist monks. He wasn't popular with the British because he didn't meet any British people. But he wasn't popular with the Buddhist monks because a real good way to convert people, he felt, was I'm going to burn down this Buddhist temple and build a church at it. <clears throat> uh, a large assembly of Buddhist monks went to Oda Nobunaga and demanded, well, requested, that he demand him to stop. And Nobunaga kind of looked at them and was like, you understand that I have three different sects of Buddhist monks fighting me right now, you're not my best friends. <clears throat> uh, any other questions? Need to back, sir? Yeah, I noticed all of the examples, or almost all the examples you put up there are in black and white. How important or necessary was the was stricture on color in law? In the West, color was very important. Uh, you know, argent, gold, all that, you know, color meant almost as much as what the shape did. Possibly more. In the East, it didn't matter at all. Color didn't matter. Most common, the most common period, were black and white. It's not until we get in the modern era. Kikomon is orange because that is the you know thing they you know associate with. Although you see a lot of green Kikomon, and I think that's usually the sodium free. <coughs> <laughs> but Mon could be in you know relatively any color. Uh, when we get into there, you've got multicolored flags. That was more just a symbol of you know easy to see. But the mon itself was often either in black or it was in white with a colored background. Uh, if you decided to do it, uh, if I can get back to uh, the wave there, the the Saito family liked to use a blue wave. Uh, not to say that all of their stuff was blue. <clears throat> it's just. They liked a blue wave on their emblems. Uh, other clans used that same crest, and they just used, you know, either a black wave on a white background or a white wave on a black background, or some other semblance of that. But yeah, in Japan, color didn't really matter, uh, especially since a lot of times you were mass producing these things. Uh, on clothing, it was often just a white emblem on it. If it was a dark colored clothing or a black or gray, some semblance of that, if you were in a light colored clothing. <clears throat> but it was also often stitched into the pattern. So, you know, I've got a you know, purplish shirt on, so maybe I would have a fuchsia, you know, design of the pattern on there. It would mesh kind of well, but just show you a little bit that I'm wealthy enough to be able to afford tailor-made clothes. <laughs> I'm not, I bought this at <laughs> uh, Any other questions? Do you have one there in the front? Yeah, okay, <laughs> go ahead. Do you look at the sports press at all? Um, like, like, I know soccer press would be a lot where they feel very similar. Um, Not being a sports fan, that is one that I totally went over. That's a great example, actually. <laughs> yeah, sports teams, all of their logos. That would be, you know, a form of heraldry. <clears throat> I really should have thought of I, I don't like sports either, so I, I didn't think of it. I'm a nerd. I don't do sports. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you can do both. It's called a balanced lifestyle. Uh, played them all back in high school. I wasn't good at any of them. <laughs> uh, I played football for three years in high school. I was a wide receiver. I have zero yards and zero catches. They would throw me on whatever side the ball wasn't going to be on and just said, bump into him. <laughs> I wasn't really all that good at that either. But yeah. Sports emblems are a great one. Soccer, football, we got a baseball team annoying the crap out of us today. <laughs> like taking up all the parking. Uh, they all use various different you know, emblems and logos. Uh, and as with the evolution of things way back in the day, a lot of them were in black and white. You know, A lot of them were very simplistic. And as technology has progressed and the logos become you know, more popular, they get all kinds of fancy stuff. But yeah, that's an actually really good example. Uh, any other questions? Go ahead. So again, you mentioned that the Mon's color itself didn't matter. So just making sure that um, field color also didn't matter. Whatever on like Sashimoto and flags and such. 
Right. It could be, you know, the owner's favorite color. It could simply be that uh, in very limited occurrences, it was, you know, two sons. One got, you know, the, the eldest son inherited most of everything. He got, you know, that particular mom. And the younger brother would kind of create a branch cadet family, and maybe he would make it a different color. Usually it was he would modify the crest slightly. So, you know, big brother gets the three fish scales with a circle, so I just won't have the circle, I'll have the three fish scales. Or maybe I'll add two fish scales to it. Because that was another one. Uh, I think the largest one I've seen is 16 fish scales in a pattern, which then create, you know, empty space in between them. <clears throat> uh, and heck if I can remember what that one is called, but it's got the, you know, Roku to it uh, for fish scales. Uh, any other questions? Okay. Where are their clothes with the first off display there? Uh, like if they weren't having it actually like imbued to it, uh, the shoulders were a good one, especially when wearing Kataginu. In that picture, that is what he's wearing with like the fancy, you know, shoulder pads to it. But even if not, in kimono, hitatare, right here the shoulders was a good one. Across the middle of the back was a very common one. Uh, occasionally you would see it on the sleeves, but that was a little less common. Uh, if it was on pants, it was usually just a pattern on the pants. <clears throat> but those are, those are the main two spots, is one on each shoulder, one across the middle of the back. Uh, of course, on their weapons, you know, uh, the handguard would often be uh, either their clan mom, or uh, you know a symbol uh, that was important to them, important to the clan. Uh, all across the scabbard, they would have it. <clears throat> but yeah, on clothing, those would be the most important ones. Uh, their hats, like they're they wearing eboshi or any form of cap, would either be right at the front, in the middle of the forehead, especially with a, a, a hachimaki a headband. Uh, or just a pattern on it, or one on each side. So those would be the main ones for clothes. Any other questions? Go ahead. Um, was it like possible for someone to like lose a mom, or like have it like hostily taken per se, like have so much shame put on that you know they were forced to change it? Absolutely. Uh, <clears throat> I mentioned you know Nobunaga in there. When he helped Ashikaga Yoshiaki, he was granted those two emblems. Well, when he booted Yoshiaki out of the capital, Yoshiaki took permission to use both of those back. Uh, that's not necessarily to say that Nobunaga didn't use them anymore. However, it wasn't really his incentive to use them, because it, if he continued to use them, it kind of showed a relationship between him and Yoshiaki. Uh, <clears throat> uh, he did pass down the uh, crest. Though. I mentioned Toyotomi used you know, that Polonia flower crest. Uh, he first started using that when Nobunaga didn't want to use it anymore, the 5-3 crest. Ashikaga gave it to him, and Nobunaga was like, eh, I don't like it. Here, monkey, you can have it. He called Toei Tobi monkey. Sorry. Which uh, is why he gets associated with that so much. Correct. <clears throat> uh, so he said, here, you can use this, and I don't care. Uh, but... And some semblances, yeah, especially for Ronin, uh, you know, you're getting fired, maybe I gave you, you know, once upon a time your family was important to mine, so my grandfather gave you, you know, the three fish scales crest with a circle that you could use, well now that I'm firing you or I don't like you anymore, I'm taking that back, you can't use it anymore. So yeah, uh, it certainly wasn't uncommon for stuff like that to happen. Uh, if perhaps, you know, I've married into another clan, you know, I've, I've married the daughter of another clan, our son is born, uh, we're two prominent clans, so he creates a mom that uses both of our emblems. And then my brother-in-law betrays me, so I decide, well, kid, you're not allowed to use the merged one, you have to either use a whole new one, or go back to just using mine, because I've just murdered your mother since your brother betrayed me. Also not entirely uncommon. Uh, any other questions? Go ahead. Now, would women wear the crest as well, or was that just strictly men? 
Now, women would wear uh, crests as well. Uh, in the instance of a woman in battle, uh, she certainly wouldn't be prohibited from you, you know, wearing a sashimono if she was in armor. Uh, if she wasn't, she really wouldn't wear the sashimono because there's nowhere to hook it onto. And if you've got the choice, do I want to wear a flag or do I want to wear a breastplate? You would usually go, let's go with a thing that's going to stop arrows. Uh, women would, uh, if they carried a knife, they would often have it on there. You know, same thing with a man's sword, they would have it right on the side. Uh, they would sometimes have it emblazoned on their clothes. More often than not, they chose to adopt just like, you know, flowery stuff or real nice looking stuff. They would sometimes, you know, in the middle of the back, same thing as that. <clears throat> uh, or on, you know, more undergarments, there would be a pattern on it. Uh, I had a point I was going to hit, I don't know what it was now. Uh, oh, that's what it was. Uh, in the example I used where, you know, man from Clan A and woman from Clan B get married, she would not necessarily adopt her husband's clan emblem. She could, just as nowadays, you know, a woman would adopt her husband's last name. She could also say, you know, either I really like my mom, so all of my personal guards and personal retainers are going to continue to wear my symbol, uh, or she could also say, my clan's more important than yours, so I'm going to continue to use mine, and in limited cases, the guy would go, you're right, can I please use it too? <laughs> <clears throat> ah. So, yeah, yeah, women would uh, have their own mon, they would, uh, sometimes in a marriage, they may also adopt, okay, yours is two butterflies, mine is three fish scales, so now that we're married, I'm going to put a single fish scale in between two butterfly. <clears throat> Something like that. Uh, any other questions? Sir, in the back? Yeah, I saw, or I mentioned, uh, I think it was Toya Tommy, who used, uh, traced his ancestry back to somebody else in the Hyde era. Uh, most of the examples that you're, you're citing right now are uh, like Sengoku and Jedi period. Correct. But how far back does this really go, tracing? Uh, the Heian period is where it really began. And it wasn't the samurai that started it. It was the kuge, the court nobles. It started with, they all had, you know, emblems to describe them. Uh, a lot of the court nobles, their names are based on what street they lived on. The Sionji, well, they were from Sionji Street. The Nijo, they were from Nijo Street. <clears throat> so, uh, that's kind of how that formed, especially since most of them came from, you know, Sons of the Emperor. So they were prince such and such. Well, whenever he, you know, he was the third prince, so he's not inheriting the throne. He's not going to become emperor. So he's got to go form his own family. Well, what am I going to name myself? I live on Hollywood Street. I'm the Hollywood family. <clears throat> Especially since a lot of these guys would have palatial estates that took up most of the street. Uh, they then adopted clan emblems that they liked, you know. This person being, you know, founds the Minamoto clan, the Genji clan, so he's like, I kind of like this emblem. This prince, you know, fa you know, founds the Tyra clan, he's like, I like butterflies, I'm going to make a butterfly emblem. So then it gets into, I'm going to put it on something. I'm going to put it on my ox cart. So as my clan is doing business and we drag our ox cart up the street, everybody's going to go, oh, Tyra owns that. Oh, Minamoto owns that. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make all of my family members and all of my workers wear it on their clothes. So everybody knows these guys work for me. And then it became another clan looked at it and was like, oh, that looks so cool. I'm going to do it too. So all the Kuge eventually did that. And it, was a, you know, it became a battle of who has the cooler, you know, crest or mon. So the next generation comes and it's like, yeah, Tyra has an awesome butterfly. I'm going to put a shrimp on mine because I do fishing. <clears throat> And ultimately it became the samurai were the retainers of the kuge. And as it became more powerful, they wanted to emulate them. So they dressed in court attire, they wore court caps, and they decided, I'm going to make a, you know, a clan emblem too. So now my family is going to have this. And a lot of times it was, hey, I've done great things for you, Mr. Kuge clan. Uh, what are you going to give me? And it became, I can't give you land. I don't own land. The land I do own produces money. 
And, uh, ooh, I'll give you a picture. Here, put this on your clothes. <laughs> and so as time progressed, more and more samurai, you know, either were given kamon or adopted it. And the ones that, you know, weren't given it looked at, wow, that stuff looks really cool. I want one on my clothing too. And I'm going to dress all of my guys in it. And then it also became, you know, all right, well, I don't really want to give you any land, or perhaps we had a war where I proved that I'm the dominant one, but I didn't capture any territory. I just made you apologize to me, so I can't give any of my guys land. I'll give them a piece of my name, or I'll give them a piece of my crest. Uh, naming was real popular, too. <clears throat> and then eventually the samurai said, you know what, I want to be you. Exactly. <laughs> That's where we kind of get the Shogun from. Uh, any other questions? We wrap up? Go ahead. Did they ever, like, fight over who got to use a certain crest? Uh, often on a smaller scale, but similar things happened. Uh, the siege of Osaka, the whole Osaka campaign. I, Realistically, it was a way for the Tokugawa clan to eliminate the Toyotomi. But their reasoning for, you know, their Casas belly to declare war was, and this is a great trap, Tokugawa wanted to bleed Toyotomi's coffers, his treasury. So he said, hey, why don't you build a bell? Real big bell. And Toyotomi was like, all right, I'll build it and dedicate it to my dead father. So he built this bell, and he had it inscribed with a huge, you know, blah, 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 blah. And here on this line was the character Ie, and on this line was the character Yasu. It just happened to be how it was. And Tokugawa Iyasu was like, hey, wait a minute. You've put one character of my name. Keep in mind, Ie can mean six different things. Yasu can mean six different more things. But it just happened to be the EA character that Ieyasu used and the Yasu character, and they were on two separate lines. He said, you put them on separate lines, which means you want to cut me in half. We're going to war. <laughs> He's like, you have to apologize or I'm going to invade you. And Tori told me, was like, you're stupid, but okay, I apologize. You took too long to apologize. My armies are already on the march. <laughs> and so over a hundred thousand men went to war with each other, thousands dead because you spelled my name on a bell in a way I didn't like. And it wasn't even my name. <laughs> then again, the Cassus belly for that one was just kind of an excuse. Yeah, especially since he told him to build a bell. Yeah. And that was also one of the excuses was, that's an awfully big bell. That's way bigger than you should have built. You're probably reinforcing castles too. <clears throat> Uh, so yeah, that, that's not to say that they were common, but I'm sure, particularly on a family level, they probably caused some feuds. Like I said, big brother's inheriting the clan, and he gets the circle, and little brother's like, I like the circle, I want to use it. Well, no. Well, I'm going to stab you in your sleep then. And then I'm the big brother, and I can use whatever I want. Yeah. There's a reason that the pillow yari became a thing. Right. <laughs> Alright then, but that's our time, so thank you all for coming. Like I shielded before earlier, you can read us in the guidebook. Uh, thank you. And uh, if you're over 18 and want to learn how to write sex scenes in an hour or two, I will be in the 18 plus room for how to write more dirty stuff. It was popular last year and people asked me to bring it back, so I did. And then at 11 o'clock tonight, in panel room one, I will be doing a live Rakugo performance. Don't know what Rakugo is? Then show up and you'll find out. It's a Japanese sit-down comedy. I ruined the surprise. All right. Thanks, Dad.